I've had choices since the day that I was born. There were voices that told me right from George Glenn Jones was born in Saratoga, Texas on September 12, 1931. One of eight children in a poor family, his father was an alcoholic who sometimes grew violent. We were our daddy's loved ones when he was sober, his prisoners when he was drunk. Jones later wrote in his autobiography, I lived to tell it all. But despite these hardships, Jones and his family members shared a love of music, often singing hymns together and listening to records by the likes of the Carter family. They also enjoyed listening to the radio tuning into programs from the Grand Ole Opry. When Jones was nine, his father bought him his first guitar, and when he began to display an early talent, he was sent out to the streets to perform and help earn money for the family. By his early teens, he found himself playing in the dive bars of Beaumont, Texas, as well, and at the age 16, he left home for Jasper, Texas, where he worked as a singer at local radio station KTXJ and nurtured his admiration for the music of Hank Williams. A fellow that writes just as many songs as most anybody in the country and sings them just as well when it comes to the country style of singing. Hank Williams. Thank you, Roy. I've got a song here that I'd like to do that's been awful kind to me and the boys. It's bought us quite a few beans and biscuits. This is the best song we've ever had, uh, financially. A tune called Cold, Cold Heart. I try so hard, my dear, to show that you're mine. Jones returned to Beaumont a few years later, and in 1950, he married Dorothy Bonvillian. The couple had a daughter, Susan, shortly thereafter, but their union was short-lived, at least in part because of the explosive temper and fondness for drink that Jones had inherited from his father. After their divorce, Jones joined the U.S. Marines and served during the Korean War. However, He was never sent overseas, instead finding himself stationed in San Jose, California, where he continued to indulge in his love of music by performing in the city's bars. When he completed his military service in 1953, Jones continued to indulge his passion and was soon discovered by producer Pappy Daly, co-owner of Starday Records. Daly quickly signed Jones to a recording contract and became his producer and his manager, a partnership that would last for years. Jones closed out the 1954 decade with his first number one single, the comical White Lightning, which also managed to cross over into the pop charts number 73. Maintaining his success on the music charts, Jones's personal life was in turmoil. Due to his ongoing substance abuse, his second marriage to Shirley Corley had already begun to deteriorate. 
But when he met and fell in love with fellow country star Tammy Wynette, its fate was sealed. Jones and Shirley divorced in 1968, and the following year, Jones married Wynette. More than just a romantic union, in 1969, the newlyweds began to make music together as well. Breaking ties with Pappy Daly, Jones had, had also began working with one of Wynette's producers, Billy Sherrill, who added a certain polish to Jones's sound. Jones and Wynette's partnership began auspiciously enough with a number of their duets, including The Ceremony and Take Me, reaching the top ten. Desert, a thousand miles from the new sea. The very first moment I saw your smile. They both continued to do well on their own, too, with Jones releasing several top-charting singles. Around this time, Wynette also gave birth to their daughter, Tamala Georgette, and by all outward appearances, Jones and Wynette were the era's reigning king and queen of country. Behind the scenes, however, Jones battled, continued, he battled with drug and alcohol abuse, and his relationship with Wynette turned tense and combative. In 1973, things reached their breaking point, and Wynette filed for divorce. The couple attempted to reconcile and release the single, We're Gonna Hold On, in 1973. But while the song was a success, making it to the top of the country charts, Jones and Wynette's marriage continued to... Decline. Jones' heartache seemed to seep out on his 1974 solo hit, The Grand Tour. Keep driving. Come on in. If you'd like to take the Grand Tour. A gut-riching ballad about the end of a marriage. He and Wynette divorced the following year. Despite their separation, however, Jones and Wynette continued to work together from time to time, recording hits such as the number one single Golden Ring and Near You. By the mid-1970s, Jones was falling apart, both physically and emotionally, as the years of drinking and drug abuse began to take their toll. But in 1980, he returned to the top of the charts with He Stopped Loving Her Today from the album I Am What I Am, Jones's biggest seller to that point. I watch the years pass slowly by She's still prayed on his mind He kept her pictures on his way Went half crazy down at the end Ah, but he still loved her through it all Kept hoping she'd come back again 
He married Nancy Sopovato in March of 1983 and later said that it was her love that had helped him straighten up. Though he remained a darling of country music critics in the 1990s and was in the inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1992, Jones seemed to be pushed off the radio by a new generation of country stars like Garth Brooks, Tim McGraw, and Shania Twain. Around this time, Jones also gave the public an inside view at all of his troubles and triumphs with his autobiography, I Live to Tell It All, 1996. In his later years, Jones continued to maintain a rigorous tour schedule, playing numerous dates across the country, and in 2012, he garnered one of the greatest honors of his career, a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Talk to you and congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Award. How does it feel to be here this afternoon, knowing this honor you're going to be? Well, I, I tell you what, I, I just feel wonderful, and uh, it's a great honor. Uh, to still be remembered, you know, at my age, it feels real good, you know. And uh, we're happy and we thank all our fans for making it possible. And uh, we're just looking forward to all of it. Jones died on April 26, 2013 at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee where the 81-year-old had reportedly been hospitalized with irregular blood pressure and a fever just a week earlier. With a career spanning more than 50 years, Jones is regarded as one of country music's all-time greatest stars. His clear, strong voice and ability to convey so many emotions won over thousands of fans, as well as earning him the envy of his peers. As fellow country star Waylon Jennings once said, if we could sound the way we wanted, we'd all sound like George Jones. He'd been in the hospital like four or five days. I hadn't spoke a word. Never opened his eyes. And uh, the doctor came by and he said, I'll be back around one or two, because he said he'll probably pass by then. And I'm like, oh, but please come back. Don't leave me here. And he said, oh, you got family here and I said no I want you here he said okay I'll be, I'll be back I promise we'll go take a shower and come back he said, when he came back we were standing at the foot of the bed and George just hadn't said nothing I mean and all of a sudden he opened his eyes and I was fixing to go toward him and the doctor kind of held me back and he and George said well hello there he said I've been looking for you he said, my name's George Jones, and he was gone. He closed his eyes, and that was the end of it. So in my heart, I know he was talking to God. Ah, but he still loved her through it all. Kept hoping she'd come back again. He found love letters by his bed. Dated 1962. He had underlined and read every single I love. I want to see my friend today. But I didn't see no tears He was all dressed up Go First time I'd seen him Smile in years He stopped loving her today. They placed a wreath upon his door He stopped loving her today. You know, she came back for her last time today. 
Oh, and we all wondered if she would. And it kept running through my mind. Well, this time, he's over her for good. And he stopped loving her. It plays to raise a Soon they'll carry him away. He stopped loving her today. I've had choices since the day that I was born. There were voices that told me right from wrong if I had to listen. No, I wouldn't be here today, living and dying with the choices I've made. I was tempted By an early age I found I liked drinking Oh, and I never turned it down There were loved ones But I turned them all away Now I'm loving and dying With the choices I've made I've had choices since the day that I was born. There were voices that told me right from wrong. If I had to listen, no, I wouldn't be here today. Living and dying with the choices I made. Guess I'm paying for the things that I have done if I could go back. Oh, Lord knows I've won, but I'm still losing. This game of life I played, losing and dying with the choices I've made. I've had choices since the day that I was born. There were voices 